Australia, the smallest continent and one of the largest countries on Earth. We will hunt here, in the Northern Territories and the waters of coastal canals and billabongs, in the promised land of the Aborigines, in the company of Dylan, the son of one of the elders. I just made my first spear, I think I was about 10 years old. He is like a man here. Spearing fish, well, hunting for meat. I love it when a plan comes together. I just love bow hunting in the Northern Territory of Australia. We are here on a wild boar hunt in chase of deer and buffalo. Our hunting grounds are the islands and coastal mangroves of the Coral Sea. We will survive only if we are tough, inventive and dead-eyed. The sea keeps an abundant food source for each predator around here. There will be dinner for us too if we can catch it. Welcome to this exciting hunt among the wild inhabitants of the wildest part of Australia. Outback Pursuits here off the east coast of Australia, the Coral Sea, the Great Barrier Reef, and Rusa deer hunting, archery bow in hand. I've always heard about this place and finally I'm getting a chance to come here. I'm with Andrew Webster, Kingham Safaris. They've got the exclusive rights to hunt the area and uh, we're gonna give it a go, as they say in Australia. We're about to go on our first stalk for the morning in a eucalyptus forest. We learned from our previous experience that it was a nightmare for the noiseless stalking. However, this morning's moisture has made the leaves softer. This time, the wind revealed our presence to the deer approaching, but we found another one in the valley beneath us. The wind didn't mess up with us this time, but the sun revealed our position. Just like the sun is coming from a pretty unfavorable direction, and the shadow we cast while moving frightened it. Yeah. We would have had a good chance at that one if these would have been in a way. I'm not sure which one of those two was up here, but there was one, one of them was up here, and then we ran down. Here 
there, there's a there's a peninsula and there's some deep valleys. Um, so um, you can get stags down there and you can, you can sit glassy pretty well. So we're just going down to the edge here. We've got to be a bit careful if you sneak around that side looking down, the wind's going to get bad for us. So, um, I don't know, it's either that or we, it's probably better, better going that way because if we go over that way we might blow our hunt later this morning. Okay. Okay.
spotted Rusa in this brush. We sat down and we started looking underneath the binos and we saw several. One really nice one just really hidden back in here. All of a sudden he gets up. I try to move and get in position. He starts rubbing on this branch. I think we're going to get a shot. I just start to get the full draw. He's kind of facing me. And another stag comes out of the brush we didn't know about. And they start fighting right here. It was a short fight, but I didn't have a shot. And they run back in this thick stuff. That close. That close. Wow. Unreal. A lot of times you get wind like this, what they end up doing is going in the thick stuff. It makes it tough. But if you watch close and you find one, you can usually move on. found one sleeping right out here in the open but when the sun's as bright as it is and you can't shoot from the shade because the branches are so low you're able to sneak into about 15 or 20 yards from him he was asleep there was no shot we backed out to kind of come around and try to get a little bit more of a clearing he woke up and heard us or something wind swirling in here too right now coming up to Marble Island um, for about 30 years now and um, and hunting and it's we, we love it we love coming up here it's always a challenge you know the winds um, swirls a lot more than back home well, he, your stag he went over the top of this rise and he just had a massive fight with another stag over there really? <laughs> yeah it's a shame you weren't there, I was thinking that would be great uh, footage. That isn't one of the ones that was like this year. Could have been, yeah.
good way to hunt it for us has always been get up high and do a lot of glassing and and there's also a lot of game so you've got to be really careful um, that you're not bumping too much animals. The best way to hunt is to get higher and take a look around. Tom was looking at the deer passing by like in a parade, and he saw a huge trophy bull call from the shadows. If it were about to follow the rest, it was about to pass precisely in front of Tom. The trophy animal was unique and the distance was significant. The only thing Tom could do was observe with dry throat the decoration of the male's giant antlers. All the males in the group have withdrawn and were looking at the performance with admiration. So the hunter watched the animal from a distance. The perfect opportunity for a shot could show up any time. Just 20 meters of open ground was all that separated him from the animal. kind of 
not sure exactly what we're getting to, so. Beautiful place, huh? Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. Mangroves, huh? Yep. They um, saltwater mangroves, so you can, even though there's not much saltwater here at the moment, uh, high tide, it'll come rolling in here. And we get some pretty big tides um, in this area. They get up to 20 foot. Yeah, so wow. you've got to be careful where you park your car. <laughs> <laughs> or boat. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that high tides in Australia can reach up to 11 meters? The low tides can leave seamen stranded on land, or car drivers may wake up at the bottom of the sea. Crazy, and the butterflies, I mean, there seems like there's a lot of butterflies. Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of those blue guys that you see mm -hmm. um, around the place, and in some gullies, I don't know why, but there's it's just all over everything. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's no crocodiles here though, right? No. no. There shouldn't be. No. I'm uh, not 100% guaranteed. In the northern part of the country, though, these things have a lot of crocodiles around them. For sure, yeah. yeah. You'd be very careful, very cautious, standing where we are now. Especially if there's this much water. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> You'd be standing on this side of it. <laughs> we have a lot of mangroves in Florida, so yeah, yeah. Uh, they really help control the erosion along the coastline, you know. Uh, yeah. It's really. And this is good, you know, when there's water in here, there's good places for fish to lay eggs. And, and but these are, yeah, exactly. But the tide, the tidal flow here, the tides are just tremendous. 20 foot tides is crazy. Absolutely. Lots of spider webs, too. I've been getting them all over me and stalking in the woods. Is that what that is? Yeah, this is. You know, there's a lot of places you can hunt on a beach like this. and. It's really an advantageous situation because the tide rolls in and it wipes all the animal tracks out. So every day you've got a new slate. You can see the size of the deer from the tracks. Beautiful here. Look at this. Sea kelp. This is food for the deer. The neat thing about an island like this and these big beaches and this big tide is that it wipes the slate clean. The deer come down to eat the kelp. The tide comes in, wipes the tracks out. So every day you come down here, you see new tracks. You can judge the size of the deer a lot of times by the size of the tracks. This is real nutritious for these deer. You know, there's a place in North America where you can hunt on an island and catch deer coming down to eat kelp, and that's in Alaska for the Sitka blacktail deer. It's an exciting hunt. It's a totally different ecosystem. This is tropical paradise in Alaska. It's a little bit more rainforest-like. Beautiful. Tide is coming. Tide's rolling in as we speak. Check this out. It's pumice, volcanic pumice. It's used to exfoliate skin. I think they use it in soap as well. But it's just really crazy light. It looks heavy and heavy stone, but it's just there's nothing to it. It's all over the beach here. Pretty cool. Woo. Come on, Jamal. <laughs> Just grab it with both hands and then pull it off with your weight. This is not gonna happen. This is a pandanus tree. You can see how their roots kind of stick up out of the ground in some places, almost like aerial roots 
they bush out and they actually form a, a fruit. I don't see any in this tree, but that's somewhere over there. It's pretty cool. I mean, and the temperature difference from being in the sun on the beach to walking down the sand and following the tracks into this canopy is just amazing. It's no wonder the deer just rest under these trees during the day. Claw marks on here. There's some pandanus fruit. It's pretty tricky putting a tree stand in this tree. Well, you just drive these roads on the island and you hear and see all different kinds of birds. It's kind of typical for this type of hunting. You go to Australia or Africa, you're going to end up uh, in the back of a land cruiser or some type of vehicle and you're going to be driving roads, you're going to be looking for game. Uh, the trick to it is to cover as much ground as you possibly can the opportunity that you may see game before they see you. Or if we see game, we may drive by and then try to get the wind right, get off the truck and make a stalk. We aren't hunting from the truck, but we are scouting. Just back there, we saw a really nice kookaburro. They have those blue wing kookaburros in this area. That's the famous bird of Australia. You know, adventure bow hunting is going somewhere you've never been, hunting an animal you've never seen. The Rusa deer is a pretty interesting animal. Uh, they're a lot like a red stag, but they don't have the same antler configuration. They're a lot like an elk, they're a lot like a sandbar. A lot of different types of antler game in the world, and the rooster deer is one of the most prized. So it's really an exciting time to come and hunt. We've got a four day hunt here on the island, and we've seen quite a few uh, rusa. We've seen a little bit of everything because here on the island they have not only the rusa, but they have the sandbar deer. They also have axis deer and uh, black buck. So there's a lot of different opportunities available to the bow hunter who would come here. It was fascinating to observe deer retrieval. Just like last time, the herd headed in a precisely defined direction. The clearing in the forest end was right above the beach, and it was a very convenient ambush location. If we were there now, deer would have passed right by us. Of these fruit bats they get hooked up on the fences as they're flying around at night. They're huge, huge bats. And uh, you see them quite often in the evenings when you're moving around the islands. Pretty cool. You see the chompers on that thing. 
almost looks like a little flying fox. Yeah, I guess they don't see it at night time when they're swooping around. There's the head. During the day, bats have rest in huge colonies amidst the forests. The flying foxes are amongst the most frequent clients of wild animal rescuers in Australia. The highest percent of injuries suffered by the adult bats is due to wire fences. The barbed wire causes slow and painful death to animals if these are not released in time. Put some claws on the back end too, I think. Yeah. Oh, you, well, I didn't like it when I was a kid because I used to get on our television. Now. Wombats are a type of gigantic rodents that live in Australia. The large, hamster-like mammals are animals that dig tunnels and thrive on grass. What is interesting about these animals is that their feces are cube-shaped. Most of the flora and fauna representatives here have adapted to the unique living environment. For example, this symbiotic plant that coexists with its parasite. seen a group of stags on this peninsula just there okay. and um, this is the spot where the two guys was fighting yes, in front of yes, us yes yes and then so I, and this deer the stags will be here hopefully yesterday we couldn't get close enough um, for a shot with the bow and then the, they, yesterday they went down here through this is all open yeah. went down across this gully and we haven't it, seen so far this place yet. Yeah. Well, you could, from up here, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you could see a little bit, but today we came to here okay. and stopped, but we never went that last little yes. 200 meters Great. that um, you guys can get uh, at that he headland there in the bush. And I'll go to the top and um, just give them a gentle push, and hopefully they go towards you. That's the plan. Okay, <laughs> let's wake up Tom. Andrew brought us to the ambush place, and after he left us, he went to show up from the peak of the peninsula. We did not have the slightest idea whether his plan would be successful, yet we would be prepared. We wanted to have an excellent cover-up to allow the animals to approach us as close as possible. We were already well covered up, yet should the kookaburra start shouting with its battle cry resembling a human roar, 
All the animals were about to find out we are here. We did just what we had to do and luckily, we got lucky. Tom covered up behind a trunk and measured the distance to several good aims so that he doesn't have to lift the rangefinder if the deer approaches all of a sudden. Come up through here. One dog legs away from us. Normally the big one is at the end, but I couldn't see anything antler wise on the end one. But this middle one got right there in the shooting lane, 50 yard shot. I don't know if we got him. I'm just gonna give him some time. I definitely heard the arrow deflect, but there's a lot of light and dark shadows. Sun's going down, it's evening. We'll give him 15 or 20 minutes. We'll walk up and see if we can find the arrow. Wow. Pretty exciting right there. Real exciting. Unbelievable. It's pretty exciting when you're on the ground, spot and stalk. And uh, you've got this beautiful ocean in the background. You've got these animals. They're just beautiful. Tasty and fun to hunt. Right here is where my arrow deflected, for sure. It was on this trail right here. Buck, it ran up this way. There's blood right here. Blood right here. There he is, right there. He didn't go 25 yards. Yes. Unreal. This morning, he bucked up that way. He must have him back around and go downhill. There's a stag, Marble Island, right there. Check this out. It's totally clean on this side. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> you can still see some of his velvet sh shaved off there. Just hanging. It just is so exciting, you know, when 
when you're on the ground eye to eye and you're spotting stock, you're just moving along, it's starting to get dusky, and you're looking, you're listening, all of a sudden we hear a rock roll, we see legs, we go into combat mode. There's three stags working up the ridge. This was the second one in line. I never did see the last one. I saw his legs, but I couldn't see any rack or anything, so I wasn't sure. It was definitely three stags together. The first one got away from us, kind of dog-legged away. But real exciting. I shot him for 50 yards, got a deflection. Really doesn't even look like there's any mark on the side of this thing, but I definitely brought him down really, really quick. It looks like I hit him up more in the front, maybe caught a juggler vein in the front. Wow, what an exciting hunt. And a beautiful Rusa stag taken on Australia on Marble Island. We've got more days to hunt. The sun's just setting. I just love bow hunting. This is why. You know what's coming next. Survive the elements and bag the big prize. Hunting and fishing have been around since the beginning of time, but now you can be a part of it from anywhere with Safari Channel. Safari Channel is the first outdoor network to offer a 4K visual experience with reality shows from around the world. Safari Channel is a brand new way for hunters to watch their favorite shows. The channel offers immersive, real-life experiences in 4K and adrenaline-filled hunting adventures of all kinds. Endless types of hunts like wild boar in Europe, dangerous big game chases in Africa, close encounters with the deadliest animals in North America, and other hair-raising hunting and fishing shows with new episodes every week. The best hunters and outfitters in the world offer you an unforgettable experience. Join us every week for new episodes of this exciting series and get ready for the most adrenaline-filled hunt of your life. From tracking bears in Alaska to uncovering exotic animals in Africa, we've got you covered. Tune in every week or sign up to become a member of the Safari YouTube channel for the latest catch. Safari Channel, home to the most exciting episodes of wild boar hunting, animal tracking, and safari adventures. You won't find anything like it anywhere else.